Santo for this cause. Are we all there? We're all on it? Anybody have the new living? No. No. Okay. That's okay. For this, you do? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Wow, that we're getting increase in the knowledge of God now. Amen. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering and joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father who hath made us able to be partakers of the inheritance. Ooh, what inheritance? Everything that's in this word is our inheritance. Everything that has been completed is our inheritance. Okay? In Jesus. Who hath delivered us from the powerful, uh, the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. That is so powerful, you guys. It's just, just, just powerful. You just got to look at Ephesians again. Look at Ephesians 1. I was, I was going over that more today, and it's just so delicious. Starting at 17, for the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, you're the Father of glory. And he's saying, and I'll, I'll go right to the Amplified. I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Now, because I spoke that, your ears hear it, and if you say amen, amen, when I finish praying, you all just pray this, and you, it, it's yours. Okay? Insight into the mysteries and secrets, into the deep and intimate knowledge of him. By having the eyes of your heart flooded with light so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you and how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints, his set apart ones. He's saying we are rich in his inheritance. We are rich. Amen. You are rich. What does that mean? You guys, you got to remember, this not only means salvation, that you're going to heaven. But this means you're rich in health, you're rich in finances, yeah. and when we go through our study night, joy, peace, long-suffering, joyfulness, we're rich in those things. When we say, I agree, we've got it, or amen. And so that you may know what is the immeasurable and unlimited surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe. We're believers, right? as demonstrating in the working of his mighty power, which he exhorted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule, authority, and power, and dominion, and every name that is named, above every title that can be conferred, not only in this age, ah, and in this world, but also in the age and the world which are to come. And he has put all things under Jesus' feet. He has appointed him to be the universal and supreme head of the church, a headship exercised throughout the church, which is his body. We are the body, and we are the fullness of him, fullness of him, fullness of him, fullness of him. Okay? Now, what did he all do when he walked this earth? Everything. No. No. Or the fullness of him before and then after he left this earth. Before and after. Before, so he was under the law, correct? Yeah. He was under the law. And then when he rose from the dead, what did he do? He gave us. He gave us our inheritance. We have already got it. You don't have to wait until he dies, so to speak, because he has already died. Yeah. Okay, just like... Um, are our kids going to wait around, or um, are your kids going to wait for you to die to get your inheritance, Dee Dee? No. no. Now, the reason I use that, okay, God has already, through Jesus Christ, he died, went into hell, rose up, beat the devil, beat that sucker up good, right? Yep. And he came back and he gave us the authority. Amen. He's already gave us our inheritance. We've already got our inheritance. We don't have to beg him for anything. We've already got it. Amen. 
Oh, isn't, I don't know about you guys, but that gets me real, real excited. And, and one of the things is the inheritance is he's put everything, everything that has a name under our feet so that we can speak the word and the word goes out and produces what it says it's going to. It's not us producing it. It's not us producing it. And I'll use Kyle again. When I spoke that he was not going to die but live, and we prayed and worshiped that hour and a half on the way to the hospital in Milwaukee, the devil could not touch him even though he had died. Even though they gave him 5% chance to live. He could not stay dead. He could not stay, okay, in that comatose state. He couldn't, where he's breathing completely on the resp respirator. He couldn't. Only because Jesus Christ paid the price. The only thing I had to do, we had to do, we agreed together in prayer. Well, Tracy agreed when she was on the phone. She was a little hysterical, you know, but she agreed. I said, Tracy, do you agree? Yes, Mom. Okay. And we hooked off because then the, am the ambulance was there and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So we speak, but he does the work of whatever you spoke because he's already finished that inheritance and has released it to all of us. He's released it to all of us. Yesterday, and, and I, I got home yesterday, and it was like something just hit me. I just did in it. Then I laid down after dinner. I thought, oh, my goodness, I got socked in the gut and all over. Did you ever feel that way, like just everything went out of you? And I fell asleep on the sofa. And then I woke up and got up, and <laughs> I went back and fell asleep on the sofa again. He went to bed. All right? This morning I got up and ate, and all of a sudden, bang, just like it hit me again. I said to him, I got to go to bed. I got to go lay down. And I did, and I fell asleep. That's not like me. No. And then I woke up, and I started moving around and giving, and, and it came to me to take a piece of toast. I had a, one piece of my good bread there, you know. And so I took that, and I thought, wait a minute, why didn't I pray? Because when I hit that bed, I was out like... You know, but God is on the move all the time, so you have to speak to it. Then I laid down today for a bit, and I fell asleep again. Me? Now, that's not like me, is it? No. But I'm just like, no, devil, I am not going to put up with it. Is the devil going to come to steal, kill, and destroy? Yes. He shouldn't do that to me, should he? No. No. I have an assignment. And I was given that assignment before the foundation of the world. Everyone has been given that assignment before the foundation of the world. Everyone. You all have an assignment. Mark, back there, you have an assignment. I know he's back there. Yeah, he's up. Those, those kids at our house tonight, that, you know, the, there is an assignment. Every one of us have a, an assignment. And when we realize, hey, wait a minute, I got an assignment. You're going to fulfill that assignment, whether it be in your workplace or whatever it is. We understand that, don't we? Yeah. Yes. Dee Dee, you want to make that announcement, please? She's got one. Oh, please. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, can you hear me? Can yes, you hear me? we got okay. you. Okay, the first Friday, there is a prayer call. That's, that's this coming Friday. This coming Friday at 11.15. Our time. Our time. The number, and, and if you want this number, you have to call in. You don't need a code. And it's to pray about the war on religious freedom and its broad impact. And it's with Dr. Wells, and he's a mayor of a little town in California. And then you get on there, and what is it, like an hour? Yes, it only Around goes an hour. hour. Mm -hmm. That you pray with yep. a group of people. Yes, what they'll do is it, the, the pastor will lead the prayer. You'll pray for just a few minutes in the spirit. And then again, but this speaker, what's his name again? Dr. Folk. 
Dr. Wells. Dr. Wells will be speaking on sanctuary cities and on our freedom of religious, religious freedom. Now, they're trying to shut us down. The whole Democratic Party is against religion, you, against Christians, you know that. They're against, yeah, they're ag every one of the Democrats on there are against the freedom of religion. They're against the flag when they had um, the Democratic uh, candidates speaking or whatever. Debate. Yes, the debate. There was no American flags. They don't want the American flag. They want the American, they want us like Venezuela. And I say, no. So if you don't call in on that, it's, Here's the number, write it down, please, please, please. 712, same one, 775-7430. So it's 712-775-7430. These things are really, really important. I know I try, the first Friday of every month, I try to to get in on the call. If something happens that I can't, I'll just pray in the spirit for a time. All right? I don't go on and on and on and on. I'm not a religious person. You know, oh, you got to do this and you got to do that. I'm sorry to say I used to be, but now I'm, I'm doing good, I think. Okay? Live and have fun. Have a little joy in your life. Okay, have you got some papers? You got them? Good. Okay. Pastor Kenny, do you want to start to read In and After the Spirit, Lesson 14? By the way, we only have two more of these lessons left, uh, you know, this particular study. But then what we'll do is I think I'm going to do the one on worship. But it's not going to be with a workbook and everything, all right? And, because praise and worship, you guys, it, it, you know that um, I sing a hallelujah? Mm -hmm. Is that the name of it? No, I raise a hallelujah. And when do you do that? In the middle of the storm? In the presence of my enemies. I sing a melody. What am I doing? When the devil is coming at me, I am going to praise and worship him. I am going to praise and worship him. I know what I see that. You know, you've just got the joy of the Lord on you all over because you were in a box. And you didn't even know you were in a box. Mm -hmm. And you're out of that box. And you just can't help but smile all the time. You know, that's the way I feel since I came to know Jesus. Mm -hmm. No matter what happens, I still, you know, like today I had music going. I'm just, I raise a hallelujah and just, you know, he raised me up and greater and these songs like that. God is good. Amen. So. But why would praise and worship be so important? What happened to the walls of Jericho? Yeah, remember, a baseball field, they could, they could put a baseball field on that wall. There was houses in the wall. That's, they raised chariots. These weren't some little stinking chariots. These were, they bragged, you know? And they raced on, this, on that walls of Jericho. But did it fall over or did it sink right into the ground? Because you have to look it up and you have to. They did not crawl up and over. It said they, they went in. And they would describe that in every commentary that I've had and going to the Strongs and the whole thing. I never found it. Because when I was at another church, they were trying to tell me that it fell over. I was like, oh, why couldn't I find it? And the more I questioned, the angrier the person got at me. And I was thinking, but it doesn't say that. You just That's what pastor told us. Okay. I walked over and I said, Lord, I still don't believe that. I, it, it was too hard to, because you've got walls. And, and it sounded like it was just a six-foot wall or smaller. No, there was a woman that lived in there. Rahab lived in that wall. And there were other people that lived in But when you look at racing chariots, when you, you know the size of a baseball field. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's big. It took it. Why? Because God was showing his hand. When you get Paul and Silas, and they were in the lower prison, the worst, right? 
What happened when they start to praise and worship? What happened? The chains fell off. The chains fell off. The, the prison doors. Now, th listen, this was security lockup. This was real security lockup, right? What happens when you praise and worship, you bring heaven down? That means God will come on the scene and devil, you don't want to mess with my God because he ripped you up once before and he's going to do it again. Amen. Got it? Yeah. So that's why praise and worship is important. So just just try it for yourself. It works. I was, I was ministering to, and you guys don't know this person, I was ministering to this person today. And she's going, I never thought of that. I said, you think about it. I'm going to send you this song. And I sent it, texted to her. Raise a hallelujah. That'll get you shaken up a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Pastor Kenny, let's hit it. In and after the Spirit. Lesson 14. At the end of Romans 7, Paul said, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of his death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 7, 24 and 25. Notice that he didn't say, I thank God for Jesus Christ our Lord. He was saying, I thank God I'm delivered from the body of this death true Jesus Christ our Lord. In other words, Paul was describing the futility of trying to serve God in the flesh. The flesh part of us, body and soul, will always fall short. Imperfection can't be perfect. How do I ever get out of this? Praise God true Jesus Christ our Lord. I have a brand new person inside of me. Then Paul moved right into chapter 8 which speaks of letting our born-again spirits dominate our lives through the power of the Holy Spirit. Romans 7 describes frustration, defeat, and sin coming alive. Romans 8 overflows with victory. As I said earlier, the, script, the spirit, spirit is mentioned once in chapter 7 and 21 times in chapter 8. Paul was contrasting Christ living through us, Romans 8, with us trying to live for God, Romans 7, that's powerful. Now, let's do this here. You have the scriptures that came with the study. Do you have the scriptures? Did you bring those along? Yeah. All right. This really came to me because there's some powerful scriptures in here. Let's read the scriptures now. Why? Because then you'll get better understanding when you're reading it, but it at least it'll go into your spirit man so that when you're learning that spirit man will come together with what you just said. Okay, because when, you, when we read something, what happens? You give God the word to work with, and he's going to do it. Marita, do you have it? Start reading, my dear. Hold it like this. Romans 7, 24 through 25? Mm-hmm. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of his death. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the, serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Okay, read the next one too, please. There is, uh, there is therefore now with earth, uh, therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life is Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. D, would you read the next two? But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Joined. We're joined unto who? The Lord. Wow. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Okay, Deb. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of the sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Now we know 
that when you're not born again, you walk after the carnal man, which, it, what does carnal mean? Flesh. Flesh. So you're walking in the flesh. Once you ask Jesus into your heart, who are you then and what do you walk in? Walk in the spirit. Give her that. You walk after the spirit. spirit. You walk after the spirit, right? And, and, and so you, you don't look at the, yes, you're still going to make mistakes and walk in the flesh. But God does not hold that against you. That's just mind-boggling how he doesn't hold against you. Let's say I messed up royally yesterday or even two seconds ago. God doesn't remember that. Why does he want me to repent, though? Why does he want me to, to say, you know, Lord, I messed up? Because, go. Because if you don't, it basically stops. If you don't, it basically stops your blessings. Did you get it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now, you know, it, we don't want to stop our blessings, do we? No. It, no, look, listen, let me tell you this, though. God is still going to bless us. Okay, but it is going to stop. Why? Because we're going to get guilt and condemnation because now we've opened the door and the devil put his little sweet foot in there and he's not going to take it out until you said, get out in Jesus' name. He doesn't have a choice. Right? Because he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus Christ came to give life in abundance to the full, to the overflow. We get that, oh, there isn't anything impossible. Oh, okay. Um, Judy? Hit it, Judy. Debbie will share hers. I know she will. Which one are we on? This one here. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. What does Romans that mean, 8. he's none of his? What does that mean? The he who, who is, if any man have not the spirit of Christ. How is the only way that you cannot have the spirit of Christ? If you're not born again. Not born again. Once you're born again, then he says, okay, then you're his. But if you're not, he says you're none of his. Boy, oh boy. And you think of everything he covered up, not covered up, but wiped away because he loved us what he went through just for us. Okay, last one, please. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, peace, joy, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Is that sweet? How many of you want to live in those fruits? How many want to have that? How many want it for your kids? Even if you don't want it, do you want it for your kids? Mm -hmm. Oh, I want it for my babies. Someday you're going to have children. <laughs> Probably 13 of them. I just... No, thank you. <laughs> I can't believe she said no thank you. <laughs> okay, l let's go on. Let's go on. Children are such a blessing, I'll tell you. Okay, we're on page 210, right? All right. Pastor Kenny, you want to pick her up, sweetie? Did we get that far? 210? I don't know. Where Maybe I don't we think did so. it. Maybe we got to. <laughs> I think we Maybe we free got from to condemnation. condemnation. There you go. Yes. All right. There, there is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, Romans 8.1. That's 8, us. 1. Who is in Christ Jesus? You are. If you've been born again and have this new man with this new nature, there is no condemnation to you when you are in Christ Jesus and walking. Not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Are you walking after the flesh or after the spirit? Spirit. After the spirit, because you're born again. Mm -hmm. See, and the devil tries to tell you, oh, you know what you did wrong there, Pastor Jan. I have no idea what you're talking about. 
no idea what you're talking about. Who was the gal um, that was very flamboyant way back? Miracles, what was her name again? Marilyn Monroe. No, this was a Christian <laughs> woman that did. <laughs> that did. <laughs> she, she was she was a bit of a hussy. <laughs> no, um, um, she came out on the stage and she had those sleeves, you know. And she, what was her name again? Mark, who is she? Mark. <laughs> Not Amy. Oh, I, I just drew a blank too. Catherine Kuhlman. Catherine Kuhlman. I mean, oh my goodness, she would just and people would just be. Benny Hinn went there and he was describing what happened there, you know, and so she got married, and the man was pulling her away from the Lord, and she divorced him. Well, another man went up to the stage and said, you can't be up here ministering. You got a divorce. She leaned down. She said, I don't know who you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And she continued. Did you get it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was pulling her away. Hmm? There's no condemnation for, just look what that guy tried to do to her. That is so sad. I hope he took note of that. Go ahead, Pastor Kenny. But if you let this brand new spirit live through you, there's no condemnation, no judgment, no sentence against you. Nothing can stop you. Nothing can hold you down. This born again man doesn't have any limitations or inadequacy. As Jesus is, so are you in your spirit. 1 Corinthians 6, 17 and 1 John 4:17. Condemnation refers to declaring something unfit for use. When you condemn a building, you declare it unfit for use. The devil does that to you by saying, you sorry thing, what makes you think God would use you? That's condemnation. Mm. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had me made, made me free from the law of sin and death. Romans 8, 2. The law that governed my old man declared you're a loser and a failure. You can't lay hands on sick and see them recover. You can't prosper, you can't be happy, you can't have joy. That old man is now dead and gone. The law that enforced this rule isn't over me anymore. Amen. Now remember, what, what was, okay, it says in, in Romans 8 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. What is he talking about here? Who knows this? I know you know it. No? Okay. You're not under the law. You're not under the law. Because the law, the law of sin and death. That was the commandments. With works. Mm -hmm. And with, the law was not made for a righteous man. Yeah. So now, through Jesus, we're not under the law. We're under grace and mercy. The law was good because it brings you to the knowledge you need him, right? Mm -hmm. But we're new creatures in Christ yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And where are you seated? Heavenly places in Christ. Oh, doesn't that feel good? Mm -hmm. But the devil, if he can get into your thoughts, if he can get into your thoughts before you know it, it will come out of you. Do you understand what I mean? They say that um, anybody who's an atheist, you'll find out for sure if they're an atheist. Charles Capp said there's not one true atheist. Well, what do you mean? Put him in a foxhole. God! Got it? Yeah. So don't mess with me, Satan. You're taking on something you shouldn't have touched. Right, Dee? Mm -hmm. Right, Dee Dee? Yeah. Woohoo. Okay, let's read down, down to positional and experiential, please, Kenny. 
for what the Old Testament law could not do in that it was weak, true to flesh. God sent in his only Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, Romans 8, 3. If I would not have that imperfect, the Old Testament law would have been great. I have kept it and that I would have solved the problem. But because I was imperfect through my flesh, the Old Testament law, instead of being something good, actually became my condemnation. So God sent his only son as a man and judged sin in his flesh. Now, you think about that. You hear somebody. How many of you have heard Kurt Cameron or someone that question a person that doesn't know Jesus? They'll just, I know they were outside of a college. Um, um, what was the name of it? I remember the people that were there. I believe it wasn't Berkeley. But anyway, it was, it was a college in the South. But um, he was asking him, where are you going to go when you die? Well, I'm going to go to heaven. Why? Well, I'm a good person. What makes you a good person? And he, he was just asking the guy questions, and he got to the end, and he said, according to what you're saying to me then, Kurt Cameron saying, I'm not going to go to heaven. No, no, he said, you said it. You said it because I just gave you some laws, and you said no, I don't keep that law. Do you understand what I'm saying? So he said, how is the only way you can get to heaven? I don't know, he said. And he said, asking Jesus into your heart, and he did. And it, he, it was like, and it was a young guy. It was like a college kid, just The next one came along, and he said, he was dark hair and a little flesh hair, and he said, nope, I believe what my professor said, and my professor said there's more than one way to heaven. By, not only by Jesus Christ, and I've st studied different religions, and I know there's other ways, and they said, can you give me scripture? He said, no, but my professor knows. So he says, you're going to believe somebody else, and you could have an insurance poly policy that you could go to heaven. My professor is so smart. I'd believe him any time. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. So when you put your 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 heart into a person to trust a person. Don't ever trust me, you guys. Don't do that. Not unless I've got the word of God and the word of God is first place. Do you understand what I said? Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that's really truth, and that's why you've got to look at what I read and what I teach and what I preach because it's got to be the word of God, right? Debbie, you want to pick up and read the next one, the next section here? Position, positional and experiential. Mm -hmm. experiential. Experiential. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Romans 8, 4, and 5. There's a difference between in the flesh and after the flesh, and in the spirit and after the spirit. If you are born again, you are in the spirit. That's a positional truth. It's the way you are. But you might not be walking after the spirit. You might be walking after the flesh and letting your physical self dominate, which means you won't experience in the natural realm the victory that's yours in the spirit. But the truth is, positionally, you're in the spirit. Did we get that all? Okay, okay, because I, I had to read it over myself a couple times. Go ahead. If you aren't born again, you are in the flesh. That's your position. But you could walk after the Spirit. In, your, in other words, you can imitate the things of the Spirit. Although you could do some things right, it won't change your standing with God. Only being born again can do that. In speaks of your position in Christ, in the Spirit, or not in the flesh. This is consistent all the way through the eighth chapter of Romans. However, after speaks of how you are experiencing things. What are you thinking? They that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Romans 8, 5. How can you tell if you're walking after the spirit or after the flesh? What are your thoughts focused on? Are they on the flesh? Is your mind occupied with fear, strife, depression, or poverty? 
then you're after the flesh. If you're after the spirit, you'll be thinking about God. You'll be meditating on his word and who you are in Christ. It's really that simple. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Romans 8, 6. If you're thinking on carnal things, you're after the flesh. For instance, if someone treats you badly and you mull it over again and again, you'll be hurt, depressed, and offended. That's what carnal mindedness produces, death. It not, it's not so much what that person did to you that makes you angry, bitter, or upset. It's the fact that you meditated and thought on it that empowered it in your life. I've had people come against me, but I've learned to be quick to cast things over onto the Lord. I refuse to think on the negative side of things. There are people who are promised to kill me if I ever set foot on their property. There are nationwide ministers, people you'd know if I named them, who believe that I'm the slick, slickest cultist since James Jones. They've even proclaimed that publicly. People have used my tapes to criticize me. But do you know what? I don't think on those things. And as a result, I'm not hurt or offended. I've held meetings, and been on the exact same platform as some of these folks. I've loved them. I've sent people to their churches, and I've given offerings toward their projects. I speak nothing but well of them. I'm not angry or bitter because I don't dwell on those things. It's not what people do to you that makes you angry, but how you think about it. If you're carnally minded, you'll get carnal results. If you're spiritually minded, you'll get spiritual results. This is awesome. That's, that's, that's hard to, huh? Did you ever have that? Somebody did you wrong and you just want to, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and finally you say, Lord, I just give them to you. Yep. Because you know what we're doing? We're saying, devil, come on in and steal from us. You don't like what they did. You don't like what they said. But you don't want to rot inside because of them. And you just... Lord, I give it to you. Thank you in Jesus' name and walk away. Mm. Judy, you want to go on there? You are not in the flesh because the carnal mind is enmity against God for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Romans 8, 7 and 8. Lost people cannot please God. They are in the flesh. They aren't born again. They don't have the life of God inside them. They have this old sin nature instead. For them, it's impossible to please God. But you are not in the flesh, Romans 8, verse 9. If you're born again, you aren't in the flesh. You are in the spirit. You may be walking after the flesh and getting the same results as you did before being born again. But the truth is, you aren't in the flesh anymore. But in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Romans 8, verse 9. And we could go on and on. There are some powerful truths here, but it's basically saying that you're already free in Christ. You have this new spirit on the inside of you, and the only thing holding you back is your stinking thinking. You still think like you're married to that old man. Well, I resisted for a while, but I'm just an old sinner after all. I'm going to sin anyway, so I might as well give in now. If you think that way, you're walking in the flesh, and you will reap corruption. Here's what you need to begin to realize. I'm free. There's nothing in me that's making me defeated. There's nothing in me that can make me depressed. No outside circumstances can make me discouraged. My spirit is always full of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Galatians 5, 22 through 23. I have a choice. Will I let hurt, depression, anger, and bitterness rule me? Or will I be spiritually minded and let who I am in Christ reign? It's my choice. If you think that way, you will be walking in the Spirit, and you will be free to receive God's blessings and goodness. 
Now that's freedom. Now, you, you know, you look at that, like, look what they say to Andrew, about Andrew Romick, but he doesn't believe that he's like that. That's why it cannot take over him. Right? Do I dare ask you to tell you, to tell them what you told me on the way in here? What was told to you at a church? We're not going to say what church. Or, can we do that? He's got it right there. Yeah. Do you mind? No? Okay, get that up there nice and close. Okay, years ago, back in 2012, when I initially filed divorce against my soon-to-be husband, I had gone through marriage counseling through a church and talking to several marriage counseling people through the church, including the pastor, they told me that if I got divorced from him, I would go to hell. And they told me I had to submit to him no matter what he was doing to me. And I had to stay in it for the benefit of my child. That's why I had to take him back and reconcile the divorce. So I stayed into it until I recently left in March of 2018. Yeah. God granted divorce. He never told us to stay, in a, stay into a situation that was dangerous for us. He never did. God is a God of love. And when people tell you that, they're under the law. They're not under mercy and grace. They're not operating. I know something like that happened when we were in one of the second churches we were in, and um, it, it just totally dumbfounded me. You know, and when you find things in the scripture, even though you don't understand them, you keep your mouth shut, and you think, I'm going to stay away from you, but you can't call that person out at a big congregation and start pointing fingers at them, make them feeling terrible, and the husband was a jerk. You know what I mean? You, d you just don't do that. And that gal continued to come because she says, you're not going to chase me out of my church. Well, eventually she did. She couldn't take the harassment anyway. That is not God, you guys. It's not. When somebody is pulling you away from God, God does not expect you to stay and continue to be in that relationship. And look at now, you're happy. But thank God that you listen to God instead of to man. But we've got to go through the scriptures and, and, and look. And you were born again. Yes, I've always known about God and have always known about Jesus. But, you know, like my coach said, until you really, truly know him and have a relationship, you know, because I've followed everything. And I, just, and I just, because of what I was told and taught, I just, like, didn't know how to get out of it, and I just waited and waited and waited until I just like yeah. took yeah. off. I remember her and her sisters and her dad and grandma over at the church, and they sat back by the sound booth in that back. I remember seeing you guys there. You know, I, I, I don't know, but I didn't know all about it. I didn't need to know all about it. Okay, I just knew they were having some difficult times, but they didn't talk about it. They, you know what I mean? Um, that I know about. But we've got to go back to the scripture. God is a loving God. He's not a hating God. He's not a tormenting God. He's not that way. You know what? When you think about Jesus fellowshipping with us, how do you pray? Let's, let's, how do you pray? Do you, oh, I got to pray for an hour. All right, that must be an hour. Well, that was about 30 seconds, Pastor mm -hmm. Jay. Is it now? That isn't what God wants. He wants to have that intimate knowing him, that love. You know, that, that when you're hurting, you say, God, I need your help. He needs, he wants us to talk to him. When our children aren't behaving, he wants us to say, Daddy, help me. He wants that. He wants that fellowship. And, and if you're going to be on your knees pretending you're so righteous, and that isn't what he's looking for. J 
just like when Pastor Kenny and I talk, you know what, and we can go a long time without talking. You know how you're in the same house and you can, yeah, and, but you know you've got fellowship, you know, and that's the same thing we can have with God. And we can talk and we can say, oh, God, you're so good to me. I love how beautiful this guy. That's prayer, guys. A better way to pray. You, we went through that study. You know what? I like, I'm not religious. I don't like that. I don't follow a religion. I follow the word of God. The best of my ability. And that's what I want to do. I want to fellowship with him. I want to talk to him. You know, I want to say, oh, Lord, look at, look at that. Isn't that sweet? You know, you're out there and, and see the kitties wrestling. Oh, Lord, that's so sweet. Persnippity had nine babies. And I just, oh, God, that's so nice. I'm talking and praying. Talking and praying are the same thing. And you're pretty much into that all day. You know what I'm saying? So this... This getting into con guilt and condemnation is a, just wrong. Okay, who would like to, in the spirit and after the spirit, the outline? Who would like to read that, Dee Dee? Would you like to, Dee Dee? Just take the, yeah. <laughs> At the end of Romans 7, Paul said, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the, from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, Romans 7, 24 and 25. Notice that he did not say, I thank God for Jesus Christ our Lord, but rather I thank God I am delivered from the body of this death through Jesus Christ our Lord. Paul was describing the futility of trying to serve God in the flesh. The flesh part of us, the body and soul, will always fall short. Imperfection can't be perfect. How do I get out of this? Praise God through Jesus Christ our Lord. I have a brand new person inside of me. Then Paul now, can I, I just say this here. You know, when we take communion, I'll praise God for sending Jesus, for his blood flowing through Jesus, and God's blood, um, you know, running out onto the ground and covering us. It's God. I've got a, I've got a relationship with him. You've got a relationship with him. That's what he wants. So when you're praising God, God, thank you for sending Jesus. You're just the best daddy in the whole world. Jesus, oh, I'm so glad I got a brother like you. Earthly brothers aren't like you, but you are really, really good to me. Oh, and Jesus, I want to thank you for the Holy Spirit. You know, I really love that. And Holy Spirit, it's so nice that you're leading and guiding me. I'm praying. I'm acknowledging who he is and who I am. You want that intimacy, right? We don't have to yell and scream. So all we have to do is have that knowing him, that knowing, that intimate knowing him. Daddy, I, I, just, I just give you that person. I thank you for taking them. I thank you, first of all. I do. I ask for their salvation. I'm mad at them right now, and I'd rather hurt them than pray for them. But I give them to you. Oh, take that out of me, God. I just don't want to feel that way. That's exactly how I feel. Correct? Is it wrong? He knows how you feel. Get her done. Right? Okay, go on. Okay. Paul, Paul moved right into chapter 8. Which, speaking of letting our born-again spirits dominate our lives through the power of the Holy Spirit, Romans 7 describes frustration, defeat, and sin coming alive. Romans 8 overflows with victory. The spirit, spirit is mentioned once in chapter 7, 21 times in chapter 8. Paul was cr contrasting Christ living through us, Romans 8, with our trying to live for God, Romans 7. If you've been born again and have this new man, new nature, then you are in Christ Jesus. They, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Romans 8, 1. If you're letting this brand new spirit live through you, there is no condemnation, no judgment, no sentence against you. 
Condemnation refers to declaring something unfit, condemning a building. The devil says, you sorry thing, what makes you think God would use you? Isn't that what he does? Yeah. Because I was imperfect through my flesh, the Old Testament law, instead of being something good, actually became my condemnation. For the law of the spirit of, of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. For what the Old Testament law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemnation, sin in the flesh. Romans 8, 2, and 3. There's a difference between in the flesh and after the flesh, in the spirit and after the spirit that the righteousness of the law might be filled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For that, that are after the flesh, do mind the things of the flesh. But they are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Romans 8, 4, and 5. If you're born again, you're in the spirit. If you aren't born again, you're in the flesh. In speaks of your position in Christ, in the spirit, or not in Christ, in the flesh and after speaks of how you are experiencing things. Makes sense, does it? Yes. Yeah, experiencing things. Lori, do you want to read number five there to number six? How can you tell if you're walking after the spirit or after the flesh? For they are not after the, f after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit, Romans 8, 5. If you're thinking on carnal things, you're after the flesh. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. If you're after the spirit, you'll be thinking about God, his word, and who you are in Christ. Carnal mindedness produces death, but spiritual mindedness produces life and peace. Pastor Lock Kenny, you want to read six? We'll just go right on here. And Lost people cannot please God because the carnal, carnal mind is enmity against God for it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can we be, can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Romans 8, 7 through 8. They are in the flesh. If you are born again, you aren't in, in the flesh. But ye are not in the flesh, Romans 8, 9. You're in the spirit. You may be walking after the flesh and getting the same results as you did before being born again. But the truth is, you aren't in the flesh anymore. But in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of the law dwelleth in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his, Romans 8, 9. You have this new spirit on the inside of you, and the only thing holding you back is your stinking thinking. <laughs> your spirit is always full of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Will you let hurt, depression, anger, or bitterness rule you? Will you be spiritually minded and let who you are in Christ reign? It's, a, it's your choice. Now we know that death and life are on the power of our tongue. We know that, okay? Then what does Deuteronomy 30, 19 tell us? I, yeah. I said Go. before you life and death, the blessing and the curse, therefore choose life. Right, he even gives us the answer. Finish it up. Therefore choose life that you and your descendants may live. You and your descendants. It's a heritage that we're passing on. Isn't that awesome? For me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. How many want your kids to go to heaven? Mm -hmm. Wow. I definitely want my kids and my grandkids to go to heaven. Okay, in and after the Spirit, these are the, the disciple quest, discipleship questions, okay? So what, what, what does Paul use to describe himself in Romans 7? 24 and 25. Do you remember? Go back to that, to the, to the scripture that we had. 
and I ripped mine off and gave it to somebody. So where is Romans 7, 24, and 25? Who's got it? 7? Yes, Romans 7, 24, and 25. So what, what word does Paul use to describe himself in this scripture? Oh, wretched man, or wretched man wretched. that I am. He's a wretched man that I am. Ooh, what do you think he's saying there? Finish the, the scripture. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, thank you. What did he want to be delivered from? What did he want to be delivered from? His death through Jesus Christ our Lord. The body of this death. The body of this death. He wanted to be, right? Yeah, delivered from that. So how was he delivered? Didi, what do you think? Through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay, number four, Romans 8, 1 and 2, reveals that there is no what to them who are in Christ Jesus. No? Condemnation. 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 Number five, now that we're in Christ Jesus, how should we walk? After the Spirit. After the spirit, not after the flesh. Listen, you guys, I still mess up and I walk in the flesh sometimes. I am so glad that he doesn't hold that against me. But how I have the Holy Spirit gently say, don't do that. You're only making it so the devil opens the door and he can, you know, and then he can bring condemnation in. No, uh-uh. So, um, number six, right? Okay, what has made us free? What yes. has made us free? Yes, ma'am. Salvation. Salvation. The spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Yes, salvation, same thing. Okay, what are we free from? What are we free from? The law of sin and death. Give me to Cancer, diseases. Aim, that, I like that. We're free from cancer, diseases, yeah. Yes, the law of sin and death, uh-huh. Okay, number eight, 1 Corinthians 6.17 reveals that he who joins to the Lord is what? One spirit. One, one spirit. spirit. With him. We're one with God. My goodness, we can be so excited, right? Number nine, according to 1 John 4.17, how are we right now in this world? How are we right now? What did he say? We're made perfect. We're made perfect. As but Jesus is. As Jesus are. is. That's made perfect. We're as Jesus is. That's what he says in 1 John 4, 17. Right? Yes. Amen. Amen. 10. According to Romans 8, 3, and 4, the law was weak through what? The flesh. The flesh. Okay. So... You know, if we, if we were in the flesh, then we'd have to go by the law, wouldn't we? But that's passed away. Now we're going through the spirit. We're, we're in a whole different avenue here. Uh, number 11, God sent his own son in what likeness? Sinful flesh. Yes, the likeness of sinful flesh. He became sin for us. Wow. 12. What was condemned in the flesh of Jesus? Sin. Sin. So he took all of that, all of our sin, past, present, and future, and everybody in the whole world, he took everything onto himself and took it into hell. It's done. It's finished. Isn't that great? Yes. Woo hoo Why, number 13, why did he do that? That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Amen. He did that for us again. So we would be the righteousness. He made us righteous. 14. Should we now walk after the flesh or after the spirit? Spirit. spirit. After the spirit. According to Romans 8, 5, and 6. How can we tell if we are walking after the flesh? How can we tell if we're walking after the flesh? Should I answer? 
They that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. We do the things of the flesh. Right. 16. How can we tell if we're walking after the Spirit? We mind the things of the Spirit. Amen. I love that. 17. What results does carnal mindedness produce in our lives? Death. Death. Because, because you're not saved. 18. What results does spiritual mindedness produce in our lives? What does spiritual mindedness produce in our lives? Life and peace. Life and peace. I love that. To have life and peace in your home, oh my goodness. Okay, 19. According to Romans 8, 7 and 8, what is enmity, what is at enmity against God? A carnal mind. The carnal mind. 20. Is it subject to the law of God? Carnal mindedness, is it subject to the law of God? No. 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 Because you're not born again. Um, 20. Is it subject to the law of, whoops, 21, sorry. Can it ever be? No. No. 22. Can they that are in the flesh, lost people, please God? No. If you're born again, you're pleasing him because you're born again. This is not hard, is it? But we just think, oh, I got to run to the altar and I got to, that's what we did in that church. We ran to the altar and repented. And then I forgot, what am I up here for again? One time I wouldn't go and then a pastor yelled at me. I was the head of women's ministries. You should be an example. I said, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> it was like I, when I was in a Catholic church going to confession. That was a hoot. I made up a lot of sins. Really, I swore 10 times. I, you know what I mean? As a kid, come on, get a real life. Okay, 23, according to Romans 8 and 9, is a born-again believer in the flesh or in the spirit? In the spirit. In the spirit. Who dwells in us? The spirit, the of, spirit God. of God. In order to belong to Jesus, we must have what? The spirit of Christ. The spirit of Christ. The spirit of Christ. According to Galatians 26, according to Galatians 5, 22 and 23, we are no longer born again spirits, always, wait, I said that right. According to Galatians 5, 22 and 23, what are our born again spirits always full of? What are we always full of? Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, Meekness and temperance. Wow. Well, do we tell our kids you're naughty when they do something wrong? Say no. Because that's, that's calling them evil. Naughty means evil. What do you do? You take them in to you and, and you correct them and you say no. You're not to do that. Do you understand? But you don't start, you bad kid, you are a little evil thing. You're just doing what the devil wants you. Don't. Do that crap. That's putting a false image in them of God. God would take them and draw them in. You know, like I take my little Sammy in the pantry at home. He puts out this, the little ladder, and I sit on the little ladder, and he stands there. And then, then he doesn't know we go in there, and I'm correcting him. <laughs> Got it? He comes out, I love you, Grandma. Why? Because it's in love. Do you understand that? That's why we're correcting our children, because of love. You teach them that, and they'll, they'll, they'll be able to receive it. But if you're always yelling, and you don't yell and cuss at your kids. That's what happened to us when we were younger. Man, we, that was um, cursing us. You curse you and putting you down. That's not right. The word of God. But do we have to sometimes, if, you know, parents say, you know what, you, you shouldn't have done that, and I told you if you did, this was going to happen. Now, actually, like I said to Sam, he, he couldn't come over on a Sunday night. And I said, now, Keisha, he was busy here, and I said, tell him that upset me that he didn't want to come over. 
That was a punishment. He could not come to Grandma's on a Sunday night. That upset me that he didn't want to come. No, no, I said, I, and, and he knew what the punishment was going to be if he didn't listen, right? He didn't listen, and, that, and he chose not to listen, so he chose not to come. And for him to get understanding is he made that choice. I didn't make that choice. He made, that was the rules. He made the choice not to listen, and the penalty was not coming to grandma's. So then um, last Sunday, him and I got to talk a little bit. I said, you know, that really bothered me that you chose not to. No, I said, it wasn't your mom or your dad. It was you. You made a choice. I know. Don't have to hang your head down. Now you don't want to make choices like that. Today you get to choose. There's the rules. Choose the rules. Yeah. Isn't it? When we understand that we have, and God's got rules. He, we know the rules. Huh? Right? If I go sleep around and I get AIDS, is that a, a normal thing to know that I shouldn't be doing that? Did God give, make me get that? Who did it to who? The devil. I did it, and the devil jumped in, and he said, oh, I'm just going to load it on there, which I'd never do anything like that because it makes me, you know. But that's why when we take accountability for what we have done, that's when we know to change it. Okay? So when you put the rules out there, here's the consequences. I used to say to the kids, what consequence would you like to take? I don't like any of them. Oh, no, no, you help me make these out, don't you remember? Which one are you going to choose? Because if you don't, I'm going to, and I always give the worst, don't I? I remember one time doing that with Cordell. He said, Grandma, I changed my mind. I don't want any of them. And I said, no, 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 you sign this paper. I think I still have the paper. And he remembers it. Oh, okay, just get it over, Grandma. Okay. It was as simple as that. A little switch right on the back of the leg, three times with a little willow, sting. Did I beat him? Did I leave black and blue? No, I just followed the word of God. Let's get her done. He hugged me and we got one, one. And I said, Cordell, come here. Please don't make me have to do that again. I said, don't make me have to do that. That hurt my heart to have to do that. Oh, See, it was his choice that I do that. Think about it. Is this right or wrong? Right? Okay. Who has a testimony? Okay, we'll start with Debbie, and we're going to go right around because everybody's going to have a testimony. If you don't have a testimony, you're not used to this, well, that'll be fine too. But Debbie, go right ahead. All right, I received the favor of God this week. Um, I purchased some um, protein mix at Walmart. I usually buy a brand over at the health food store, but I was at Walmart, didn't want to have to make an extra stop, and I thought, they've got so many choices. It was an organic choice. I thought, that's a good name brand. I'll use this one. Good. I open it up. I take a scoop, put it in, mix it up, try it, and it was just like I was going to choke on the stuff. It was so nasty. Oh, good. It was nasty. Oh, goodness. And so I thought, I'm going to try to return it. I don't know if that's their policy or what their policy is. It's already been opened. But I'm just going to tell them, I opened it, I tried a scoop, it's nasty, I don't like it, will you take it back? And they did. They took it back. So I, I just believed that I would have the favor of God as I went in there, and I got my money back. That's good. Amen. Judy. I believed for favor also. Um, um, where I work, I mean, typically you get the holiday off. Typically we would get the holiday off but they gave us the Friday after off and paid. So that was very nice. And then um, I even got to leave early today. So it's very nice. Amen. Amen. Well, I got a visit from a cop this afternoon, and I call that favor as well, I guess. <laughs> what happened today? <laughs> Wait a minute. Kind then, of odd. Then what happened today? <laughs> I was... I went, I went somewhere after work just to a, a track to work out and stuff, and all of a sudden I hear someone. It's like a fishbowl. They have seats that are up and down, not a level stadium. 
So I hear someone in a vehicle on the top calling my name. I don't recognize the vehicle, so I walk up there, and it's a cop. And he said, just so you know, I'm not going to do anything about it, but your plates aren't registered anymore. Because I got a different car, and I didn't realize that it only ran through the term of my old car. So he said, I'm not doing anything about it, but you may want to get those registered. I said, okay, thank you. Praise God. Pastor Kenny? Pastor Kenny? Oops, take this here one, and we'll go right around. Oh, that's right. You'll be going next. Um, basically, uh, we got a job that we're working like an hour and a half from the shop. And on the way to the job site, the guys called me and said, the tire, one of the front tires is really going bad. The truck is really vibrating. So I don't think um, we're going to make it. So mm. I just spoke to it and said, you need... God, you need to get that truck to the job and back to the shop tonight mm -hmm. without, without having to call a tow truck to come and get it. Well, just before I left to come here, the truck was driving back in. So. Amen. Yeah, because yeah, those tow trucks can be a little expensive. Yeah, yes. <laughs> especially, especially if they got to go that far away to get it. <laughs> yes, don't want to do that. Marita, a testimony. We can, if you can't think right now, we can come back to you. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. Mark is going to want to give you one, too. One. You got to be in this study tonight. <laughs> okay. Um, I couldn't think of one, but I finally got one. Um, everybody knows my daughter's having twins. I gave her... Daughter? <laughs> yeah, my daughter. <laughs> Um, I gave her Memphis's old crib, and then they went to set it up, and she's like, Mom, the hardware is missing. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. And, of course, we have a little bit of time, but she wanted, of course, to set up the nursery and everything. And same thing with the changing table. That's missing hardware, too. So I go on Marketplace, and I'm panicking. I'm like, how am I going to replace Memphis's crib for her? Well, she found one. And I'm like, okay, well, we still need another one. And she's like, Mom, where are we going to find another crib? I'm like, don't worry, I'll replace it. And I said I would. Well, I found one a couple days ago, and it didn't cost me anything. I took it up there a couple days ago. We put it together, cleaned it all up, and she's like, that's a nice crib, Mom. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Doesn't that feel good? Miss Dee Dee. I, I'm going to give a testimony of Tom's. Tom was flying to Florida, and the plane was going up, and he said he noticed the plane was coming right back down. Did he, he did just today? Yeah, um, two days ago. Tom Sr. Yes. Here the pilots had lost oxygen in their cabin. They could only fly at 10,000 feet, they had told him, and they had to make an emergency landing with the plane, and he said... There was people crying on the plane, and he said the runway was full of ambulances and fire trucks when they came down. They went in t into Cincinnati, he said. And they, they had to wait for a new plane, and it was fine. Wow. Gee, prayer works, huh? Yes. Yes. Um, I went to the store to purchase a, a bush for my, um, or a plant for my, my garden and um, there, w there was no um, sign saying it was on sale or anything like that and I get up to the counter and she said she told me what the price would be and it was like half off of what it was and I was just like oh thank you Lord and she said I'm not sure she said some of these I no I asked her is it on sale she said no but she said, I don't know why, but some of these plants are just ringing up this, <laughs> like, half price, you know. And I was just like, thank you, Lord. I mean, it's something little, but praise God, I'm thankful. You know, it's like I didn't have to spend full price. So I was thankful. Amen. 
Um, I just found out a couple weeks ago that I made the dean's list for my school year last year. Whoa! Praise the Lord. That is smart. Um, the plane that I normally fly um, in the exercise in July is getting sent to Indiana, so I was disappointed, but um, there's a pilot in Milwaukee that's going to make a special effort to bring that plane for me so I could fly with the National Guard um, in two weeks. So it's all going to work out. So uh, God, God works things out in all kinds of strange ways. So. So have favor with that, that pilot down there. Amen. Amen. Do you have one now? Marita? I'm thinking. You're thinking. <laughs> Anybody else have another one? You save it for next week. You save it for next week. <laughs> we save it. <laughs> you know what? I, I, I was, it, that's why I gave mine before that yesterday, you know, when I got home. In fact, I was at church yet. Or no. Monday. No, yesterday after I was here. All of a sudden not feeling good and going home and um, to be able to sleep, you know, and get rid of that, you know. I at one point I had to take some aspirin. I was hurting so much, you know, and I didn't even feel guilty. No, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But usually stuff like that would keep me awake. <laughs> I felt right to sleep. So God is good. All the time. Now you got something, Marita. No, you're going to Life Fest, aren't you? Mm -hmm. All right. You're looking forward to that? Yes. Good. Okay. One thing. We're going to set ourselves in agreement for Life Fest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why do you think that is? Yoga. Yoga. Did any of you look up what yoga is really about? I think it's got Eastern religion involved in it. Yeah, it's demonic. And, and there is this lady, and I, I am going to send this out to you. I forgot I said that to some people. But yoga can get you into some real trouble. It's just like Dungeons and Dragons and Harry Potter. And you don't want to mess with that. And they're going to have it there, which really disturbs me. But would you set yourself in agreement with that? People will know the truth, and the truth will set them free, and they'll not even go there. Amen. The girl will not even end up there. Do you agree that? In yeah. Jesus' name. Okay. So, nothing yet. Let's, let's take our offering. If you think of something, just put your little hand up. Let's take our offering, and, um, and then we'll uh, take communion. Oh, oh, take, take. She came right to my house, and I was in the house, and I'm like looking for her. I see her car's there. She's out holy weeds. <laughs> I, you know, when I see a weed, even out here on Sunday morning. Thank you. I just. Do you want to come to my house? <laughs> Who are you? You might see what she's there. Who are you? Yeah. We'll just go out there and start sowing into your garden by pulling some weeds. You think I'm kidding? No. When, oh. You'll be doing that at your house next. Yes, then you'll be doing that. But you know what? There. I just put it in, and I mean what I say. Did everybody? Yeah, we did. Then we got it done. Okay, I'll give you the story, and I was telling this yesterday morning to, to some of the girls. Where did I just put my... What did I do with it? What are you doing? The wafer? Did it get yeah. on your arm? Oh, <laughs> you're wearing it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, anyway, this boy wanted this bike, okay? And so the dad said, we, you know, and he said, well, where's a picture of it? And so he brought a picture of the bike. And he said, is that the best? He said, oh, yeah. Good. He said, you know what to do? He said, yes. He went and got his Nintendo game. Nintendo game, you know what that is? Mm -hmm. And he gave it away. Do you think the boy got his bike? Yeah. So whenever, and he's been taught that, and I know that the Copelands and a lot of people, that when you want, but you've got to take something of value to you to give it away so that what you want will come to you. Think on that. 
you know, like you want your own apartment, start doing a little weeding. So into it by weeding. I would, I would, even when I go by my bank once in a while, I'm, I'm pulling weeds. I just, you know, <laughs> I had one day, somebody was teasing, why don't you do the whole building? I said, I don't have time for the whole building. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, Father God, we thank you. Now, God said for us, and we just gave our offering, and, and he said, when you give, you'll get back to you and be pressed down, shaking together, running over. Men will give into your bosom. You know, just like going up and you're paying, and here it was half price, Lori. Things will be on sale. Things, God will just show you his favor in those little things, and you'll go, wow, God, you're so good. That's what we're celebrating right now because we're, we're partaking of our inheritance. And that is everything in that Bible is our inheritance. Do you agree? Amen. Then let's pr break this and let's eat. Take it by faith. You have tithers rights. And now This is the Father's, simulating the Father's blood that flowed through Jesus. And that blood that flowed through Jesus was his daddy's blood, Father God. And it flowed over onto the ground. He took his Father's own blood and put it before the throne. And that blood covers us yet today. Do you agree? Amen. Yeah. Amen. We're the righteousness of God. Let's drink. No other testimonies, everybody's good. Well, like I said, we have two more lessons, and then we'll go on. But we won't have a study book with the next one, but I did get some praise and worship books in, so we'll have to get the price of those, and, and Dee Dee will get those into the bookstore or something. Uh, but learning how powerful praise and worship is, I mean, I, on Sunday morning, sometimes I just want to run around. I just get so excited, you know? How can you help it? When you know there's something that you're coming up against, and you know you cannot do anything, and you just, in the midst of the storm, you raise your hands and you start to worship him, heaven will come down personally and change what has been coming against you. It's a guarantee. Where do I find the guarantee that all the promises are yes and amen to glory of God through us? Second Corinthians one twenty, all the promises in one twenty two, there's the guarantee to us. So we've got a guarantee. Take it to the bank. Okay? Thank you, Father. I bless each one here. You have a wonderful 4th of July. Yes. Amen. 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 Well, it was nice to have you here tonight.